everybody. This is Kimberly Ray. Um, as a mom, I really care about the messages that my kids get and the books that they read and the movies they watch and the things that they hear. And so you're probably the same as me and you don't want to get a book for your kids or for other people's kids without knowing what's in it. And that's why I'm here today because you may have heard about Chosen, my book for Christian families who adopt. And my intention was that it be affirming and positive, but also truthful. But obviously, you know, looking at the front and looking at the back and having me say that it's positive and truthful doesn't really mean much if you haven't read the inside of it. So I'm going to read it to you today so that you know what's in it and if it may be something that you would want to choose, maybe as a Christmas gift for your own children or for if you know a Christian family who adopts for their kids or especially if you know someone's about to adopt this might be something that would really encourage and bless them. And the intention is also that it grows a little bit with your child. It starts out really young as a read to or a simple read for children. And then there's also a section later on for as the kids get older and they start thinking of some more, some heavier questions and some deeper things. But we'll explain that when we get there. So let's get started. Chosen, You Belong by Kimberly Wright. All right, starts out with copyright information, and this is a section for parents with a little bit, um, well, information about here's the main book for the little ones, the extra stuff for bigger kids, and then a section for difficult days if they are asking the tough questions. Let's get started with the good stuff for the little people. There are lots of babies in the world, and every baby is special. I just love the pictures in this book. It makes me happy reading it. But not all babies come to their families in the same way. Some babies come to their families in their mommy's tummy. But others come on a plane, on a train, in a car, or in a teacup. I'm not so sure about that one. <laughs> a baby might come the day he or she is born, or when he is just learning to talk, or she's just learning to walk. Some don't come to their families until they are older. How you get there, or when you get there, isn't what makes you family. Here's a super special thing about your family. You were chosen to be in it. It didn't just happen. You didn't fall from the sky, or get carried in by a stork, or a swan, or a duck, or a donkey, or whatever. Your family wanted you exactly who you are, not somebody else, you. Maybe you came by yourself or with a sibling or two or three or 10. Wait, that's not a sibling, that's a goat. The people in your family might look all similar or you might look very different. How you look doesn't make you family. Family is who you choose to love. Your family chose you. And want to know something really neat? Chosen kids get to be a message to the world. Chosen kids show here on earth what God wants to do in heaven. God wants to adopt everyone into his own family. His family is very big. Anyone who believes in Jesus, God's son, gets adopted forever. This is great news for everybody in the world. The most wonderful thing about family is knowing you are loved. Even on the sad days and hard days, you are loved. When you want to quit, when you want to feel small, remember, you were chosen. Your family picked you, and God picked you too. <laughs> you will always be loved. For exactly who you are, you belong. the end.
that's the end of the part that you read to kids or that they read by themselves as young readers. But then, as they get older, extra stuff for bigger kids. This is actually one of our friends. It's a great, great family. Then it goes on to ways people can show love. And as you can see, the writing is smaller. And so your really younger kids are probably going to stop back at the other section and your older kids are going to move on to these ideas of ways to show love. Teach them something new, read to them, watch your favorite movie together, give them a hug, let them have a bigger piece of cake, etc. And then, what are some of the things your family loves about you? If you don't know, ask. An idea. Parents want to feel loved too. You could give your mommy and daddy a hug and say, if I could pick from all the mommies and daddies in the world, I'd pick you. Or, I'm glad I'm in our family. Or just, I love you. That would be a very special gift to them. Everybody likes to know they are chosen. What God says about choosing you. I have loved you with an everlasting love. Jeremiah 31, 3. That means God's love for you is forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. You could write it a million times and it would still keep going. You are wonderfully made. This is another family of friends of ours. Then this page is the eternal message of adoption. I'll go ahead and read it if you don't mind. If you do mind, you can just stop here. Because this is one of the things that I would want to know most is this, you know, what is truth. The eternal message of adoption. God meant for families to be whole and for everyone to know they were loved and wanted. Families were meant to be examples, with parents showing children love and care and discipline and guidance the way God does for his children. But when things went wrong in the world and sin came in, that wonderful example got distorted from what God wanted. Now families struggle to be what God intended, and no family is able to be perfect, even if they try. Just like with the world that had rejected him, God had to make a way. He created adoption. He created it for kids who needed it here on earth, but it too was an example of something much, much bigger. God created adoption for all the lost people, hurting from sin and its effects, to come to him and belong to him again. How can people be adopted by God? Jesus already did all the work to make adoption into God's family possible. Adoption from God is a gift, and all you have to do for a gift is to receive it. John 1.12 says, but as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God to those who believe in his name. Everybody who believes in Jesus as their savior gets God for a daddy, and this daddy is perfect. He promises never to leave or forsake his kids. He never gives up on them. He's the best daddy anyone could ever have, and everyone can have him. Here at the bottom is a verse, Romans 8, 15. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption, by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. Behold, what matter of love the Father has bestowed on us, that we should be called children of God. This page was a fun one. Introducing Curious Carla. Originally, it was actually what to do about Nosy Nelly. <laughs> but when I was getting feedback from a lot of uh, adopting parents and even adopted children, the Nosy Nelly part was a little too negative. It just gave the wrong connotation. Um, so instead, she turned into Curious Carla instead, and we just talked about some of the ways to respond to sometimes some of the general questions that you might get asked over and over again. Um, so what do you do if somebody comes up and starts asking personal questions or says things that make you uncomfortable? You know, have you met your biological mom? You don't look like your parents. Let me give you some advice. How much did it cost? You know, all that kind of little too personal stuff sometimes. And maybe you're the type who enjoys talking about that, but maybe you are not. So this goes into some, just some helpful stuff that, you know, your kids might be talking to you about, or then again, they might not. And it may bug them very much when they're sitting in the cart or, you know, walking by the cart at the grocery store and another person asks, but they may not want to say that to you. And one thing that I wanted this book to be was kind of to help with maybe bring up some of those conversations or even help kids have resources for some of the things that, they don't want to say because they don't want to be hurtful or they don't want to feel like, you know, it's just uncomfortable. Um, so 
this talks about if people are trying to get to know you because they want to be friends, those are great people to talk to because you can teach them things about adoption and your family. If people are yakking away, making small talk, they're just trying to come up with something to say and it might come out wrong. Here are some ideas for answers. Again, this gives kids categories of things. These are the ones, don't worry about them. You know, you can just respond. These are the ones you actually do want to talk to or, you know, these are the ones just move on. So for example, don't you feel special that you got adopted when so many kids are waiting for adoption? I'm sure that one gets old. Yes, have you ever thought about adopting? Good answer. Um, but you look like your adoptive mom. Thank you. Don't have to explain it, don't have to go on, you just have a response and kids, with this it gives them permission to have these kind of responses without feeling like they're rude or feeling like they're supposed to give this whole big long story and you know, that gets tiring after a while. <laughs> Are you real brothers? Absolutely. Are you an orphan? I'm a chosen kid. My mom's right there. Again, it gives them something that they can say without being rude that deals with the situation, but you know, doesn't have to go into all this stuff. Are your biological parents still alive? You can ask my parents about that. You don't really belong in your family because you weren't born into it. Now, hopefully nobody ever says this to them, but if some bully does, or even if their own heart, you know, sometimes says this to them, here's an answer. Actually, did you know that in Roman times, a birth child could be disowned, but an adopted child could never be disowned? That's the culture Paul was in when he wrote Romans, where God talks about adoption. You should look it up sometime. It's pretty cool. I'd love that too. Okay. Some advice from Brianna, Brianna adopt, an adopted girl. She's a good friend of mine. She was adopted from an orphanage in Romania, I believe. And when we were writing back and forth about this book, some of the stuff she said was so good. I, I wrote to her and I asked her and I said, you know, can I put that in the book? Because it's her perspective from someone who's being adopted. And it was just really, really helpful. Things that I couldn't say. Um, and she talks about, you know, not taking offense and how she enjoyed being able to talk to people about adoption and share about it. And so kind of a different perspective, like the end of it. Adoption and being different isn't something one should be ashamed of or embarrassed to discuss. It's normal. And parents and children have experienced this long journey in finally finding one another. It would be a shame to keep it to themselves and not to share it in a warm hearted manner. So it's very positive, um, but just something that she could say. And if I said it, it might sound patronizing or like I didn't really understand. Okay, this one's important too. What about words that hurt? If they come across things or if they even, you know, think some things themselves or whatever, you know, here's something that can help them and give them a resource of how to deal with that internally and externally. So I'm just going to go ahead and read this because, again, if I was a parent, I'd be like, what are you telling my kid? <laughs> okay, so here we go. Most people who ask questions are kind and just curious. But someday you may meet an adult or another kid who is rude and says something that hurts. You may feel like saying something mean back or making faces. But what would help most would be to ask the person, what is your name? When they tell you, say, Mrs. So-and-so, I will pray for you today. Then, when the surprised person walks away, take a minute to pray that God will bless that person and help them to be more kind. You see, when people don't act the way they should, that's a problem between them and God, not them and you. Unless we are mean back, then it's a problem with us and God too, and it just gets worse. If we can give people over to God, then we can leave them there. That way, God can help them, but it also helps us because we don't have their mean words following us around, making us miserable anymore. That's even better than making faces. I think that's helpful advice for anybody. This is a delightful page. This is Brianna, who I was telling you about. And, oh, she was adopted from Bulgaria. I apologize, Brianna. And this, wow, this is kind of her story and sharing it from a very personal place in her heart. She was adopted by very loving parents and even still, it hung on a little bit. Um, you know, I just like to read it to you because even if you aren't an adopted parent or an adopted child, the message in here is really beautiful. A letter from Brianna, adopted from Bulgaria. I came into this world under unfortunate and grave circumstances, facing death, being born from a group of not so loved people, and being given up the minute I came into this world has been a hard pill to swallow over the years. One thing that I've held on to, though, is the stories of Esther and Moses. They were probably considered the least likely to do something important and special, but God had other plans. Moses stuttered. 
but God gave him a unique ability to be a leader. Esther had to completely change her identity to remain safe after being kidnapped and was forced to compete for the king's favor among other women possibly far more beautiful than her. Once again, though, God, the true and most important king, favored Esther and used her to save the Jewish people from being completely wiped out. I keep these stories in mind because as a kid who has been adopted, I've struggled with the idea and hope that God has an important purpose for my life. Deep down in my heart and my soul, I pray that God will use me in a magnificent way. I want to be a leader and to have a voice like Moses did. I want to help people and to do great things even if I'm afraid, like Esther. All of this being said, there's always that thundering voice which I know is the devil attempting to knock me down and pull me away from God, that resounds in the back of my mind saying, I couldn't possibly be someone special who does grand things because if my own biological family didn't want me, why would God or anyone else in this world? That negative voice tells me often that I'm insignificant, that I don't have a purpose and that I am unlovable. That just breaks my heart. I've been told my whole life that I am loved, but my family, by my teachers and by many other people in my life, I know I am loved and I feel loved often. But there are other times when criticism, harsh words that weren't particularly meant to have hurt me and moments of being ignored have echoed louder than the displays of love and affection I have received. I don't really know the solution to solve this other than that God, other than God taking over and overwhelming me with his love and care. When I have those recurring thoughts of doubt and uncertainty, I always try to redirect and focus on what God says. P.S. Being adopted, there's a huge chunk of wondering what could have been, what ifs, and a gaping hole of curiosity there. It is okay to have questions. Wondering about your for former parents doesn't mean you don't love your new parents. It's completely normal. And again, as you can see, this is, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> very small print. So that this is gonna be something your kids discover as they grow and as they have questions of their own, which leads to the very end of the book um, something that was important that I think a lot of adoption books don't have in them. We want to focus on the positive and we want to be affirming and encouraging, except that for these kids, the reality of it, as one adoptive mom told me, you know, is loss and that is there and it is part of who they are and their experience. And, you know, we shouldn't try to ignore it because they know it's there and some of them never struggle with it, but the ones that do, they need to know how to process that and how to think of that and even how to talk about it without being hurtful to the people who did love them and choose them. And that's what this is for. The difficult days, a message for if you're feeling really sad. This one is one page front and back and then it ends with um, some lines where they can write their own thoughts and questions and things that you know they care about or that they're wondering about. And this is the kind of thing that if you're giving this book to a very young child, you may even want to just take this out and wait until the time when it's needed. Or you may want to leave it in for them to discover for themselves. And maybe they'll start reading it and be like, well, I don't have any trouble with that. Um, because that starts with a lot of adopted kids like being adopted. They don't think about it much and don't wonder much about where they came from or the situation of their birth parents. If you are like that, I am very happy for you. You can skip this page. So it's not a concern of like, oh, now they're going to start wondering all this stuff. At least I hope not. But then it goes on to the big question of why didn't God stop this from happening to me? Or why did God let this happen to me? And that's a big question that all of us ask at some point in our lives. But for kids, that's that's huge. And it goes on to talk about basically the world as it is. You know what? Should I read it? <laughs> I guess I probably should. Okay. So here we go. However. Many adopted kids, and even adults who've been adopted as kids, struggle with one of the hardest questions in the whole world. Why didn't God stop this from happening to me? We want the world to be a good place. We especially want to be able to teach children about good things and tell stories that end in happily ever after. But you already know that the world has heartache and loss in it. Some of that heartache and loss belongs to you, and I'm so sorry for the pain your heart holds. Sometimes you probably hate that the world isn't the way it's supposed to be. God hates it too. The Bible says even the world itself is groaning, waiting to be made right again. I have a disease that has been part of my life since I was a kid. It makes me different and still does. It made me different and still does. Lots of days my body hurts and I even had to have brain surgery. Some days, even though I love God, I would wonder the hard questions. Why didn't God make this go away? Did it mean he didn't love me? 
Did I do something wrong? I've been studying the Bible for a long time because that is the place to go with the hardest questions. Do you know what I found there? God didn't want the world to be like this. In the beginning, the way he made the world to be, it was good, all of it. There was no sin, no drugs or anger or death or jail, nothing to separate people from each other or from God. This was the way God wanted it to be, and he loved it. But God had a choice to make. Would he make us do everything right so everything would stay good? Or would he let us choose to do right because we loved him? If he let us choose to do right, that also meant there was the choice to do wrong. You probably know the story of Adam and Eve. They only had one rule, and they chose to break it. Ever since then, people have been choosing. Sometimes they choose wrong. You probably already know the terrible truth that sometimes a person doesn't want to change, may not even want help, or they act on the sadness or anger that fills their hearts, and you can't fix it. It is very hard, and God hurts with your pain. Did you know God talks especially about you in the Bible? When he made the rules for how people should live, God's people were to treat others with justice and kindness, but especially women and children who had no one to take care of them. When God allowed people the choice to do right or to do wrong, it was like the choice of light or darkness. Anytime there is no light, what is there? Darkness. Anytime you don't choose to turn on the light, it's not there. And darkness is what's there instead. That is the same with life. Sometimes people choose darkness on purpose. Sometimes they just don't choose light. And so it is dark. And they may not even understand why. The hardest part of all is that when people make wrong choices, it can hurt the people around them, like you. I'm not going to say you shouldn't feel that hurt. It is very real and normal. You, just like the world, will sometimes groan inside that things aren't the way they should be. You know loss, but you have the choice of how much of your life that loss will have. It can eat at you inside if you let it. You can decide it's who you are and never be free of it, or you can give it to God. Don't ever feel like you shouldn't tell God the whole truth of what you feel. He already knows anyway, and he can handle it. He doesn't want you hiding inside yourself because you're afraid that what's going on in your heart is unacceptable. The next two pages in this book are just for you. I want you to write how you feel and the questions you have. If you want to keep them totally private for just God, you can tear them out and only let God read them. But I think your parents would like to read them when you're ready. They surely hope that being chosen makes you feel wanted and accepted. But to need to be wanted and accepted means you have had the pain of the darkness on the other side. No matter what your birth situation, or even if you don't know your birth situation, you may feel you were unwanted or rejected. If you let your parents read your words, they may not have all the answers you need, but they will love you through the questions, and it will help them to know how you feel. Most of all, you can ask God your questions and tell him how you feel. He promises never to leave you or forsake you. He will love you through the questions and accept you and want you through every feeling you have. And then here's the pages for them to write. And that's the end. So now you know. And if by chance you didn't catch all this or like, wait, I wanna read that one page again or what did it say here, et cetera. Um, you can pop me a note and I'll send you a PDF and you can look through it closer and see if it's something that would be good for you and for your family and the people that you love. <sighs> for all of us though, whether you're adopted or not adopted or a kid or a big person, I hope you know that God chose you and he very much wants you and his family and he loves you exactly as you are. So that's it for now. Have a very, very blessed day.